Namaste, Jai Hind and welcome to yet another conversation around Ram Mandir for India but with somebody who is not just a personal favourite of mine as an author but he's also a lovely human being and it's good to sit one on one and not via virtually. So, should I say Jai Shri Ram or Jai, Jai Baba Bholenath? Jai Shri Ram. Or should I say Namaste? Jai, Jai Shri Ram, Ram Harar Mahadev. <laughs> Harar Mahadev. <laughs> you must remember, Lord Ram was also a devotee of Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva. <laughs> so, but let's start there. Hmm. See, uh, when you say Ram, and Ravan both were Shiv Bhaks, mm. correct? And Ravan is counted amongst the foremost of Shiva Bhaktas. What was different between the two of them? Good question. I think one of the key differences was uh, in the devotion that Ravan had towards Lord Shiva. Mm. There was a lot of ego. I don't know if you remember that story. There was one thing where Ravan decided that Lord Shiva should not live on Kailash mountain. He has to live with me. Yeah. In the, you know, in Lanka. Now, okay, there's some love and devotion in that. I don't deny that. But the arrogance, you know, that he asked Lord Shiva that, you know, you have to come. He said, no, I'm happy with my wife out here. He actually picked up that full mountain and was trying to, yeah, you know, take and it back. Yeah, that's where the and then he, Exactly. Yeah. Now, that shows arrogance, right, in uh, devotion. Whereas Lord Ram, I think one of the key traits that, that he had, despite such tremendous capability, was his humility and calmness. Think of the way he worshipped Lord Shiva hmm. at the Rameshwaram. The calmness and humility uh, you know, that he had. Uh, I remember there was a documentary I was shooting once called uh, Legends of the Ramayana, which was hmm. Ram Vangaman Pat. And we stopped at Lanka where again Ravan had, uh, sorry, Lord Ram had prayed to Lord Shiva uh, for you know cleansing him of the sins of you know killing all these hmm. people. And again the humility that he had. And to me that's something that we can uh, learn from Lord Ram, the value of humility. Hmm. So, uh, Ravan had capabilities, but his ego was a curse to, not just to those around him, but to himself also. Hmm. Whereas Lord Ram, because he was humble, uh, he was an inspiration to everyone around him. You spoke about the entire Ram Rath and the Ram hmm. Yatra, the hmm. whole thing from yeah. Ayodhya all the way to yeah, Sri Lanka, Ram right? Ramba, yeah, 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 the one Gaman and all of that. So, what did that convince you of? Was this a myth? Was this kalpanic? Or yes, you know, is Ram real? Look, you know, it's like this. Look, I, I'm not a scholar. Hmm. We need proper scholars to research this. The real scandal is this has never been researched properly, hmm. right? But just as a as a lay individual, as a storyteller, as a public intellectual, whatever you want to call it, there are things that I found and that our entire crew found, which actually shocked us. Like, for example, you know, you would have read also in the Valmiki Rama, and Valmiki ji had said uh, that in Chitrakoot there was an underground river. Hmm. Now, when you read that, I'm sure you must have thought, at least I thought, ki yaar, underground river, ye thoda jada ho hai. what mm. is this? We actually in Chitrakoot, we found a cavern with a river, with a tiny river, of, you know, a stream flowing yeah. underground. Underground. And we actually shot out there. This is there in the documentary, mm. right? Uh, and you really can't, and then we got a geologist along, you know, and he was trying to explain ki, bhai, pani aa ka se raha hai, jaan ka raha hai. And there are various other things like this, which mm. showed that, Valmiki ji was actually describing actual places. Hmm. So, right? is it Ram Setu or not? Well, actually we showed that in the yeah, documentary yeah. as well. And this was released a year and a half back. Uh, so, you know, there are, like for example, uh, we were told that there are stones which float. Correct. Right? Hmm. On the sea. And again, everyone has stones that float like, yeah, sure, I'm not really so sure. Okay. Uh, we found stones at Rameshwar. Again, we had a geologist, right, out there hmm. explaining it uh, to us. Uh, you've heard of coral, of course. Yes. You know, the, mm. And when coral dry, die, they dry up and become rocks. And because of the very nature of coral, uh, they are very light rocks because they are porous inside. But they are very strong. Strong. Right. Mm. They, they can be load bearing. So in Rameshwaram, for example, this geologist took us to churches that had been built there during a colonial era. Okay. Mm. Where these stones had been used. And these stones were strong enough, they, they were load-bearing for these churches. Churches. But they were so light that such a big rock, I picked it up, just like that. Okay. Right? And these stones are found only in that area. Now, hmm. the point is this needs scholarly research. That's all that I'm saying. There's enough things in so there. So, if churches were built, then it's Adam's Bridge. How is it Ram Setu? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that Adam's Bridge is very clearly, you know, the British came up with that name. Uh -huh. uh, but the point is that parts of the Valmiki Ramayana, you can clearly see evidence of it. What I would request is scholars should study it and then tell us, mm. you know, that is this is this true or not. At least I mm. find enough evidence to 
to saying that uh, that perhaps the core of the story was you no know, it did take place mm. you know and to me i find that a uh, very so inspiring it is that lord, not a yeah that lord ram uh, you know was in a way our ancestor mm. you know and uh, we should be worthy of that blood i find that very inspiring mm. as a, as an author and mm. someone who's diving into history plus also doing a certain level of objective research mm. did you ever question this fact and why are mahadev durga ganesh ram so integral to bharat and also beyond hmm. there must be kuch to reason hoga na have you hmm. ever been able to put a finger on if because on the other hand people would say and uh, from there we'll come into the book uh, the latest one but uh, people would say this is all somebody's figment of imagination you're hmm. just fanning the flames hmm. how would you respond to that No. have you been able to put a finger to why these people and these deities mm. these entities mm. continue to be uh, among our consciousness Correct. and amongst our culture thousands of years down the line if not lakhs mm. you know i had made this uh, speech recently at the oxford uh, university in the oxford union uh, debate and uh, we were debate this is the same one that shashi uh, dr shashi tarur had spoken at mm. the british raj one so there was a debate on whether god is a delusion or not and i was obviously on the side saying god is not a delusion we won the debate hmm. not bad in oxford university not bad quite at living all. place not bad yeah at all. Uh, you can imagine hmm. the audience hmm. uh, but the point that i made was that the hindu conception of god is very different uh, from uh, the abrahamic hmm. conception of god and uh, there is of course a nirgun nirakar god who exists outside of the universe but we also believe that the divine comes close to us mm. to work as a role model for us mm. to work as an archetype for us to help us evolve because the true journey is for us to discover the divine within us correct that's what it's it's at the root of aham brahmasmi and tatvamasi god tatvamasi you are that or namaste i bow to the divine within you this thought that there is a divine in every single one of us and our spiritual journey is to discover the divine within is at the heart of all the dharmic religions and so therefore the gods work for us like role models mm. you know uh, lord ram works on the role model of the maryada purushottam uh, uh, sita ma works on a different role model lord shiva works on a different role model lord uh, krishna works on a different role model which is why they connect to us so much because all of us find hmm. the archetype that we get inspired by so those of us who are slightly anti elitist and hmm. rebellious as i am we naturally get attracted to lord shiva shiva ah. and and that is the path for us to discover the divine within i think this is why uh, all the all our gods and goddesses animate us so deeply and it's also the reason why our culture has remained alive this is the latest book i've not plugged it in so far because we're building up to it and he's called it idols but it's all about murti puja idols murti vigraha pran pratishtha many would say what's happening on the 22nd of january a lot of them are calling it consecration whereas it's not the sure. place is holy already so yeah. it's pran so what's the difference and why the need to <coughs> write this look <coughs> consecration is a western concept where a place is made sacred hmm. right um and what is the philosophy at the heart of that that the universe the world is actually not sacred it's a product of original sin hmm. because what is sacred the divine is outside of the universe yeah. the earth is a product of the original sin hmm. our, all of us human beings are carriers of the original sin so consecration means at least this part you make it sacred that's not the dharmic way the dharmic way is that everything is already divine you and i are divine divine uh, the animals birds trees the earth everything is already divine uh, so it's not that we make that place divine or we make the murti divine we essentially bring uh, the force of lord ram into that murti and when you say that you are infusing life via particular vidhi and vidhan into a vigraha or into a murti and turning it into a vigraha a living deity but which is uh, achal no mm. this is one place you mention it also in your book <coughs> so are you expecting people to take that jump and say take it in the name of faith hmm 
good question um part of it can be you choosing to follow it on faith a uh, part of it is actually use real life examples mm. uh, there are many of us uh, who sadly may have lost uh, one or both parents right mm. uh, many of us keep their pictures uh, with us uh, at our homes and everywhere and at least most indian kids will not do something like smoking in front of their parents or drinking and you mm. won't do that there are many you will find even in front of the pictures of their parents they will not do it uh, or they pass by the pictures of uh, their parents or those they idolize and look up to could be their brothers in law could be their father they'll touch the feet mm. now someone can say bhai ye to picture hai what's wrong with you right but your emotions are invested mm. in that picture uh, you draw strength from that picture it's your devotion which gives that divinity into that picture picture right uh and what happens in a temple in a vigra uh is that over centuries millions of devotees put their faith put their energy Asta. their jagruti their aastha into that vigra into that murti and then when you go out there you get the benefit of of that too you'll find that there are temples you go to for some reason which is deeply just connect with you there's no logic to it it mm. just does right because it just happens that you resonate with that murti at that point of time so there so is that so you are saying there is a science also in this because the energies and the frequency match that's that that's a belief in the in mm. the dharmic way so for example uh, in this school physics you remember when uh, an army marches over a suspension bridge they break step you know yeah, that right yeah correct why do they do that because when they are marching if their frequency matches the natural frequency of the bridge the bridge will start resonating strong even more yeah, strongly strongly right and then the bridge might break people will fall yeah. now they may drown etc etc right it's the same thing with a murti it's the same thing with being in love you know you meet someone and you just there's that strong yeah. resonance right wo isliye kehta dil ke taar jud gaya ab ye taar hai ka frequency matching is a scientific it's, uh, it's something yeah, that you just reference. feel right uh, so there's a sankat mochan temple hmm. in kashi hmm. uh, i am I'm not the kind who cries very easily. Yeah. Uh but uh, at the Sankat Mochan temple the morning aarti is at 4th I just Aasu aa gaya. Just it and it just you know just it all just yeah. comes out. But you also say that a lot of our deities are vigrahas are uh, ishta devata. So you you lean towards or gravitate mm-hmm. towards somebody and eventually even move on. So you hold on to somebody but you also start to, uh, it's happened with me personally. Yes. but you also say that this is perhaps a manifestation of some of our own hmm. qualities why do you say that it's not just a manifestation of your own qualities it's hmm. also what you're going through in life going through in life okay uh my uh, sister for example our our entire family we passed through very difficult 7 hmm. 8 years in our personal lives we lost a lot of people some very tragically it was, it was a very very difficult phase and uh, for all of us bizarrely the career kept going better and better but the personal life what is most important to us uh we were really suffering and there was no one to blame it was just fate mm. you know hitting us it's not that you know that there was someone we were fighting with someone or something it's just cancer hits or art what do you do mm. right uh there was this phase uh, when my uh, sister was uh, her husband my brother in law Uh, he fought cancer very bravely for two and a half years, and my uh, my sister was uh, very devoted to Lord Shiva, mm. and for those two and a half years, uh, Mata was giving her peace because she was just uh, she was desperate, she was grief struck, and but she couldn't show anything in front of her husband, mm. right? Uh, and they were both fighting, uh, uh, you know, this this terrible disease. She used to keep going to a Mata temple, uh, and she would just cry continuously. Mm. for half an hour all her so desperation the outpouring of emotion happened with shakti it was like mata shiva. was just yeah. helping her mm. you know and then she would come back and then you know uh, and get into the battle once again mm. um and and she said this that her husband she lost her and we lost him mm. uh, in 2018 and uh, and then she found herself drawing back to lord shiva mm. it's like the mother goddess was there and there was just at that point of time that is what she needed mm. and that's the entire point that you get the god or the goddess who can help you 
uh, at that point of time and if that gives you the strength to go through life i don't see what's wrong with it in fact i find it something very beautiful so the best part is you've written it in a very conversational style mm-hmm. of family from friends doctors so there are the scientists there is a cop there is a education educator husband wife all 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 of this then they're having a it's written in very conversational style but somewhere through the course did you realize that there is a lot of science to our philosophy and also our faith uh, because i remember immortals had a hmm. yantra that you had hmm. used yeah, and yeah. you make a mention of it yeah, here yeah. also and i was wondering if it would be answered so you've done a little bit of a plug of amish also <laughs> <laughs> it's partly but yeah it's a balance our our way of life hmm. was a balance of science and spirituality you don't actually have to pick one or the other and this is a this is a paradigm that the west tries to thopo mm. on everyone else we need to reject that paradigm it's not that you have to uh, you have to reject science to be a religious person mm. or it's not that you have to start breaking temples to prove that you are a scientist that's kind that of is. stupid mm. um and in our way you can't find a balance of both and it comes towards so the it, end it's not yeah. right at the beginning yeah. it's towards the end and the reason why After we put this Krishna, book yeah. as a conversation as well because if we wrote it like a textbook quoting sanskrit it would just scare people hmm. right uh, what happens with a conversation is that it just comes across to you in an easy relaxed way it's like a drawing room conversation uh, and you have also and given chat breakers yeah so so yahan par i can also go get myself something and take a break from the book internalize correct. it and then come back correct, and sit correct, down correct correct yeah. and we followed what was actually the upanishadic uh, traditions the upanishads practically all our upanishads are structured as conversations conversations they are not structured as textbooks one it becomes much easier to absorb yeah secondly you can show different points of view yeah because in this if you notice we don't try and say this is the right point of view you better believe it or you'll burn in hell hmm. we don't make that point yeah. there are different people expressing different points of view you're working on a documentary hmm. uh, what is that about and through the course of <coughs> understanding the entire fight struggle etc have you been able to figure out why is it that ramlalla has to prove his legitimacy even in the court of law in a bharat that is steeped in aastha and respects all religions look this documentary is essentially the story of the ram janmabhoomi temple Hmm. from the beginning to now uh, so from the birth of lord ram till now and we go through the entire phase and how different groups look at him uh, from across castes across communities hindus muslims transgenders hmm. right the lessons were for me the following one the fact that we that it was proven uh, in court uh, Uh, i think uh, chief justice uh, bobde uh, in our documentary put it perfectly that this in a sense becomes a role model for because there are other disputes like this mm. across the world mm. i'm sure you're aware of the dispute of hagia sophia yeah, and various others because yeah. remember there were pagan temples across the world idol really? worshiping temples they were all destroyed largely by european christians and turkic muslims uh, and then there were fights between european christians and turkic muslims and mm. things were you know destroyed or built yeah. over uh now these are this is across the world yeah even in latin america so many these are wounds of history how do you and these wounds of history have to be addressed if you address them through aggression and violence it just leads to an endless uh, cycle of violence counter violence right but if you address them through truth through proof through debates as was done here uh then you hopefully solve that problem to the satisfaction of everyone because when the evidence proves it even one of the litigants is convinced convinced right and you have a solution where everyone is happy and we go through the court case as well in this documentary all the evidence that was presented and you'll notice that the people who presented the evidence on the side of ram lalla were hindus and muslims mm. by the way mm. kk mohammed sahab his work yeah. actually helped and, and he made this very beautiful uh, a sentence in uh, this line in the documentary i'm paraphrasing uh, he had said that i am an indian muslim babar and meer baki were foreigners what do i have to do with them wo hindi mein kehte hai na pratyaksh ko praman kya if you go there and stand whether it is gyanwapi whether it is ramchan bhumi or whether it is uh, <coughs> krishna jan bhumi hmm. or even at kutub minar vishnu stambh it's all there point is 
why does that have to be what is visible to the naked eye why does that have to be proven in in, in, a, in, in a court of law uh, why i am asking you this amiji because you write this in the last that those who worshiped or who believed in murti puja never tried to eradicate those who didn't believe in it mm. it's the other way around that means and even upanishad means come let's sit and talk so there has to be reception if it is one way traffic and the other person is blocking and saying i see it but i don't want to accept it how do you resolve it one of the things that we discovered in this documentary is how much of the evidence was hidden mm. uh, and uh, i remember uh, and in this documentary we discovered there were muslim leaders in the 1980s who said provide us evidence and we ourselves will give yeah. this uh, give this site up uh, and uh, there were some regrettably uh, some historians who hid that evidence or misled mm. uh, the investigation and that's the benefit of a court process because the process itself ensures that the truth emerges right so uh, and there are things that many people aren't aware of even even now in the mass space like for example there was a stone discovered mm. you know uh, at uh, you know at the site uh, it's written in sanskrit it begins with om namah shivaya it says this was a temple built to that vishnu who killed dashanan the ten headed king and, and who, who also killed bali yeah, yeah. who is that lord ram now this is an evidence that's there in hindustan a hindu has to prove what is their ishtadev's place mm. uh, in uh, 1993 that till 1993 uh, the nyas was there present at gyanwapi uh, shringar gauri puja is chronicled it's all stopped everybody knows and but still what is then the mindset of the person who says i know it is your place of aastha but i am going to continue to sit on it i know i if i pray here it my prayer is not going to be accepted as per my own scripture and my own holy book but i will still continue to do it mm. that is not bhartiya way that mm. is not somebody who wants to resolve conflict mm. and then you have statements which is saying masjid shaheed ho gaya that itself is idolatry mm. because you are making masjid a living being when you mm. say shaheed ho. but that mm. kind of comments are coming look uh, there are comments made by some some silly comments made by some silly people that i'll not deny that uh why and this was a learning for me from this documentary uh why this process was good it's longer mm. right but essentially what is dharma you try and dharma is that which sustains correct that which uh, that dharyate ti dharma ha huh? that which balances mm. if you go about it this way which is longer and harder but in a way actually balances everyone along then the solution will actually last if you think about it Hmm. even the way lord ram fought ravan according to how uh, invaders used to be hmm. uh, in ancient times and even in medieval era if they conquered a kingdom you know they would pillage everything destroy, and destroy yeah. everything and remove that royal family lord ram did nothing of that right uh, ravan had uh, done adharma so he defeated him but even ravan's body was treated with respect respect his ravan's brother was made the king ravan's royal family was and that to me is the example of lord ram mm. uh, which is why even the king who replaced ravan bibishan mm. was a follower of lord ram that is a dharmic way of doing things that's why i think what chief justice bobde said in the documentary you'll see it in the documentary was very insightful he said this can be a role model for the resolution of such disputes across the world my final question amish ji you're also the author of suhel dev mm. so there is a vision of bharat mm. the pran pratishtha Mm. is this a turning point is there a bharat moment would you want to see it like that or where does bharat go from here or is this largely a political and a matter of aastha mm. and beyond that let's not talk too much about it let me say the turning point for india was around the late 80s early 90s mm. uh through some of those television serials and through most importantly the economic liberalization uh because at the root and this chanakya had said that yeah. uh, acharya chanakya that the heart of everything is artha hmm. if you don't have wealth if you don't have power nothing else matters really matters, your culture yeah. this thing everything gets destroyed that's that was our turning point i see this uh, jan uh, 22nd 2024 as our take off point take off it's been a long turning point we are actually rising you know just in the 1980s our gdp was smaller than the turnover gross sales turnover of a few american car companies 
today we are number 5 in the entire world, world. very soon will be number 3 our uh, research our culture everything is at take off point and which is why i genuinely believe this is one of the best times to be born in indian but at that same time we shouldn't assume that this success is just written mm-hmm. we all have to work hard uh, we shouldn't assume that ha ye to ho hi jayega uh, we all have to be united we all have to work hard with dedication and we can take india back to the way it was mother india can be in the committee of nations be right at number 1 mm-hmm. the way she was for most of human history well let's hope and here's to that Thank you. and uh, ladies and gentlemen do have a read it's a nice conversational one which you can uh, spread over a few days and perhaps chew upon murti puja it actually works thank you very very much <laughs> amazing lovely Pleasure. conversation Pleasure. thank you so much Pleasure.